Folks, um, he is the author of the new the new novel, The Goat. Also, was the co-founder of PJ Media, very popular website. His name's Roger L. Simon, and he joins us now on the phone. Roger, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you too, Paul. Uh, <laughs> glad that you could uh, glad that you could join us. So, first off, let's just talk about your new book for a second, The Goat. I uh, saw the uh, uh, we've got the, uh, the the tennis racket uh, on there. Uh, tell us about that. Well, the tennis racket gives you a hint because this is not a goat that you have on the farm. This is the goat that people refer to as G-O-A-T, as is the greatest of all time. Primarily in tennis last night, you were watching, and lots of people were. Uh, one of the greatest of all time, clearly, Rafael Nadal won the U.S. Open. Uh, he's a fantastic athlete. Yes. But in, this, in, in my novel, in my novel, it's a guy my age, in his 70s, who was, you know, he's a retired screenwriter and has spent most of his life playing tennis on weekends and finally made it to the finals of the seniors tournament at his club. And in the first game, his back goes out something fierce. He's rushed to the hospital. The doctor says, we got to operate. This is horrible. And a woman from India in the corner says, do not do operation. Always makes worse. Uh, but the, he's a Western guy, ignores it, has the operation, and the woman is right. <laughs> it's a disaster. He can hardly move. He's on the edge of suicide. So he finally goes out, takes the advice of the Indian woman who said, go see Cousin Gombo in Valley. He fix up. And he goes out to the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles to a little mini mall, passing all the homeless people. And there is uh, Uncle Gombo, who is a uh, Ayurvedic doctor from the from the Himalayas, who starts to give him herbs from the Himalayas, and he starts to get younger. Now, I'm not going to tell the audience what happens, because it's sort of like Damn Yankees, if you remember that, or Faust, if you remember that. But the guy gets a second life, and he gets to play against the very Nadal. <laughs> I won't tell you whether that's good or bad, because it's both good and bad. But it's a kind of a rollicking story. It's getting great reviews, I'm happy to say. And it was apropos of my other life as a screenwriter, I might have written, this is a movie first. But Hollywood is now so prejudiced against conservatives, that's like swimming up again, you know, trying to climb Everest to sell. Wow. There you go. Wow. Well, that sounds like a fascinating read, uh, Roger. Um, and so, I, you know, I imagine you're a big fan of tennis. Uh, yeah, and I play. You know, I don't play like the doll. I play like the average guy. Yeah. But it, but yeah, it's a, it's a great game to stay young because you can, I started when I was seven and I'm still going. That's fantastic. I'm I'm a fan of the game myself. Uh, I'm also kind of a student of just kind of on the men's side at least uh, American tennis. Man, we're really lagging behind, aren't we? Yeah, that's one of the things that's in the novel because this guy becomes the new potential American hero, you know, back to the glory days of Sampras Majesty, mm -hmm. which is now in, in the rearview mirror now. It's all yeah. Euro European. And a new one came up yesterday, Daniel Medvedev from Russia. You know, there is, um, <clears throat> you know, real quick, I just have to say this. Um, uh, there are new methods that are kind of going out uh, in, in America. They're trying to teach tennis, uh, you know, to younger kids. Uh, and they do it by... Um, actually you know having a they don't start off with like a regular tennis ball the ball is actually much larger stays in the air longer so they're able to teach like you know somebody who's seven or eight years old they can actually play you know an entire game of tennis entire match the first time they're taught because you know they're not chasing tennis balls everywhere you know what i mean yeah i've seen that so uh, yeah, it's, it's i think that's interesting that, I, I don't go ahead maybe it'll work I hope so. Like 18 years from now. Come on. You know, I was like, I, I, I was this huge Andy Roddick fan, but he ended up being like the Buffalo Bills of tennis for me. I mean, after that first U.S. Open win, people figured him out, you know? Yep, exactly. But uh, he, he wasn't Djokovic or Nadal or Federer, that's for sure. That's for sure. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, we're talking with Roger L. Simon, uh, again, the author of this new book called The Goat. Check it out. Uh, Co-founder of PJ Media. Now, I'd like to get your uh, your thoughts, uh, Roger. I've got these uh, few headlines here in front of me. Let me let me see if I can get them. Hollywood wants Trump donors outed. Um, <laughs> what do you think about this? Well, you know, I 
have, you know, besides starting PJ Media, I'm an Academy Award nominated screenwriter, but they don't want me anymore. And the reason they don't want me is because I'm sort of conservative. I'm not even a rabid conservative. I'm just on the conservative side. And that's the way they are. There, there are a, not everybody there because it's a mono, nothing is a monolith. But it's, it's like a giant cult Hollywood now, much more than it ever was. And they'll out anyone who doesn't want to join the cult. I mean, it's, it's a very bad situation. It's bad for the movies because a lot of people are not being served by movies. I mean, there's, it, I, I've written elsewhere that the conservative investors are really remiss in not in starting companies of their own because there's a huge audience out there. I'm sure many of them are listening right now to this show. Mm. And they're just not... They used to go. So many people have told me they used to go to the movies, but they're not going anymore. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and I will just say, I mean, I haven't really paid attention to the Academy Awards in, in a while because those Best Picture nominations, I didn't go see any of those movies. They don't sound like anything I'd want to go see. You know? They're not. <laughs> and, and you know, they're little cult movies, and and you know, the days of Lawrence and Arabia and The Godfather and all that stuff. Mm. That, we grew up on them, which everybody went to see. One of the things that's great about the movies in the old days was that they were a national habit that everybody, you know, that if you went to the water cooler a while in you know, the next day, the other person would have seen it too or heard about it. Mm-hmm. It would be something to talk about. And it would be fun. But there's, that's gone. And, it, you know, everybody's behind their computer. The movies are being made for kids that want to play violent computer games. The whole thing is sad. But you can fight back. The the, uh, the 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 late great John yeah. Wayne. We're talking with Roger L. Simon. He he uh-huh. said, uh, you know, back during the McCarthy era, and when all that was, you know, they talk about blacklisting that sort of thing. Uh, he once said on a talk show, he was like, "Listen, that we we really kind of felt that there was somebody, you know, there was an effort to get control of who does the writing in Hollywood." And and I think I think he was right. I mean, I mean, look where we are now. What what do you think about that? Uh, he was absolutely right, and you know you don't have to have a written down list to have a blacklist. Unfortunately, people know who people are. As I said earlier, I might have written The Goat, which is a natural movie as well as a novel, first as a movie if the climate was different. But I knew what the odds were stacked against me. Besides, the novels are great, and this, you write a better story if you start that way sometimes. And I think I did, but but nevertheless just know it and you know that they don't want to work with you because after 9-11 the phone stopped ringing for conservative writers largely even very famous ones like david mammoth it's 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 a a dreadful situation and you have to build alternative systems but so far they haven't done it and conservative investors are partly to blame i mean i uh you you mentioned david mammoth i mean he he was i mean he is just regarded as just an excellent, excellent playwright, and but you know he he wrote a book. It was about the I can't remember the name of his of Mammoth's book, but it was around the same time Andrew Breitbart came out with a book. Uh, and I remember Breitbart. I was I was uh, listening to him at a uh, uh, at a convention, and he had just come out with his book. But he was like, "Here's my new book, and it's on you know it was on uh, conservatism and the culture and how it's ostracized." But he was like, "But David Mammoth just wrote a book." Uh, that's on the exact same subject, and it's much better than mine. You should check out David's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was, I've read that book, too, and it's a very good book. Uh, but Breitbart, speaking of Breitbart, who used to do the Dredge Report for my house when I lived in Los Angeles, I now live in Nashville more wisely, uh, you know, what famously said that politics is downstream of a culture. And it's true. I mean, our kids are being fed the wrong food, and they're going to come out the wrong way. You're exactly right. Um, Isaiah Washington, he said this back on the 26th uh, of August. He tweeted this. I have a message for the Hollywood actors direct messaging me and revealing that you're conservatives. Don't direct message me again because you are all lame and I don't respond well to hypocrites or cowards. You're no different than the bystander uh, that is waiting on the blood to spill from a martyr. Um, what what are, your, what are your thoughts on the the amount of conservative Hollywood actors that are in the closet? 
You know, everybody asks me that question. And the answer is because they're in the closet. I really don't know. But there are obviously a certain number who are. I mean, more important are the writers because it's the writers who tell the stories, really. But, but uh, you know, it's hard to say. And I, I, I agree with that, being in the closet like that is cowardly. But they're scared. They've got kids, whatever. They, they've got a livelihood to protect. But it's, it's a sad situation. I mean... It's really, but they, they're, I don't know how to handle it. I, I came out very early after 9-11, and I, I don't know why I did. I don't think, I don't say I'm particularly brave, but as a writer uh, who wrote both, both books and movies, I couldn't lie. I wouldn't be good at it. <laughs> I mean, I'd be a terrible writer if I didn't write what I thought. Hmm. So and I don't think, I don't take any special credit for that. Actors, on the other hand, are just spewing other people's words, so it's a different situation. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. <laughs> that's a, that's a very good point. Um, are, are, last question. I know you got to go, but are you are you worried at all that the left, specifically? I remember when I was growing. I mean, I'm only I'm 35, but I mean, I remember when the left uh, was was pro comedy. They were pro laughter. There's a very unifying sense when people laugh, and now. <laughs> It's it's almost like you know people who might be more socially liberal who are comedians, for example, they're they're not allowed to go to college campuses because you know there's just such a toxic environment and it's so anti free speech, it's anti comedy, and and the left used to stand for you know this at least they stood for the idea that you get to be who you want to be and say what you want to say, but that's not the case anymore. It's certainly not. It's a horrible. You know, it's interesting. I would have thought by what you were saying, you were older than 35. I'm heartened by the fact that someone, people 35 already realize it, because at least that they realize it is a step in the right direction. But the situation, I mean, even Seinfeld, whose comedy was traditionally very middle of the road, refuses to go on campus. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's, you know, some right wing, right? He's a, you know, centrist if there ever was one. It was terrible. Years ago, I wrote for Richard Pryor. Who was wow. the greatest of the greatest? Wow! And I'll, I'll, and and I will tell you right now that Richard would find this hot. Uh, he he took no prisoners. Mm-hmm. The, it's the the secret of comedy is you can go after both sides. Like Dave Chappelle is doing right now. Exactly. He's the funniest guy out there. He is. I'm so glad. So you've seen his new special? I've seen it. Yes. Oh Very man. Fun. He, you're right. He takes no prisoners. I mean, and and they're they're crucifying him for it. I mean, they can't stand it. But I mean, he's at least standing up for free speech, and he's basing his jokes in in truth that we can all laugh at, you know. And uh, it's the left is just not they're not on board with that anymore. Uh, Roger uh, L. Simon, I, I, I give you the last word, sir. Thank you so much for spending time with us this morning. Uh, uh, oh, 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 my last word is go out and buy the goat on Amazon because you can have a good time reading it. It's funny, not as funny as Chappelle. But it's got more to say on them. So you can, you'll have a good time reading it for yes, your sir. listeners. Yes, sir. Go out, folks. Buy the goat. It's available at Amazon.com. Roger L. Simon, I appreciate it, sir. Thank you so much. God bless. Uh, thank you.